Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I want to talk about the cruise line industry. Now lately this industry has been a hot topic with people saying bye and people also calling bankruptcy. And so today I wanted to do an analysis of these three major cruise lines, uh, Norwegian, Royal Caribbean and Carnival Cruise Lines so we can see what most likely will happen and what position they are in financially. So to do that, we are going to be looking at the financial reports of each of these companies for the last quarter. And the last one was released for uh, December 2019, which was right before the virus struck. So that will give us an idea of where these businesses were before now. Now, in a previous video, if you remember, I mentioned that the only way I could see these companies being profitable, uh, stocks to buy, at least safely, because no one knows the future, was if you were going to invest in them a long term, as I really didn't believe that the stock prices would bounce back to where they were three months ago, right after this virus has passed. And so today, we'll be looking at how these three major cruise line stocks fit into long-term investing and if they are still really good companies to invest in for the long term. And this is even something that I wanted to figure out myself because you really can't ignore a stock that was 50 to $60 that's now at eight to $12 and not think, hey, I could make a lot of money here if I bought a couple hundred of these stocks. And that's been a struggle for me as well in deciding if I want to purchase more of these stocks because, hey, nobody wants to purchase stocks and lose all their money, right? At least, surely, not me. Now, I'm going to be showing you guys a, a little of what the financials look like before the virus and just a little breakdown of what's happening right there. So here we go. So these are the results of the last quarter before the virus for each of these companies. And this is a simplified breakdown of uh, what they look like. Now, if you look here, you'll see that they are all profitable, right? And that's extremely good news. It's good to see that they are profitable. But there's something you really need to pay attention to here, and it's the profit margin. Now, surely the cruise lines are a big industry, and I mean, it's roughly 10% that they get to keep, as you can see here. And I was really expecting to see more like around 20%, and upwards in terms of profits and money that they actually get to keep after all their expenses. Now, even though it's 10% on average per quarter, this is still a lot of money, right? Don't get me wrong. I mean, this is 10% of 4.7 or 4.8 billion in revenue in the case of Carnival, which sums up to about 470 or $480 million each quarter in profits. So it's still a lot of money. But from that 4.7 billion, using Carnival as an example again, they have 3 billion in operating expenses for the same quarter. Now, most of this is going to be fixed costs, uh, things like paying employees, paying off debts, and so forth. And this is what we really want to look at as investors. Now, if you have some money and you just want to invest it in anything that can give you a good return, I will say this from right now tech companies and online businesses have healthier looking financials. I mean, don't take my word for it. Check out Google or Facebook. They have a profit margin of around 30% on average, and I believe Facebook's was at almost 50%. So if you don't really have a passion for the cruise lines and you're just an investor looking to safely invest and make a lot of money, uh, consider some stocks that are in that industry and you'll find stocks with much healthier financials uh, that don't have any signs of going bankrupt, at least not anytime soon. But this video is about the cruise ship stocks and the cruise industry. So let's get back to that. So now from what I just said, I know you are thinking, okay, they make about 4.7 billion, they have 3 billion in expenses, but now they have no income. So is it 3 billion in expenses just the same without any income? And if so, how much cash do they have to keep burning uh, 3 billion every quarter until they run out of money and then have to file for bankruptcy? So with that said, let's take a look at the balance sheets. And again, this is just a simplified uh, version. Now, by just looking at this, we can see how much cash they have. And again, I really would have expected these companies to have more cash on the sidelines for unexpected things like this happening, right? I mean, 
it's kind of like that emergency fund where we say you need to always keep three to six months of expenses in cash and readily available at the very least at all times before you even invest because there's always the possibility of losing your job or your stream of income and this virus is really proving that true. I mean, no matter what business you're in, things can happen that negatively impact your earnings and it's really bad when these are things and situations that are totally out of your control so you can't really do anything about them. And that's what's happening to the cruise line industry right now. So right now with a half a million or a quarter million in cash as we see here, this is definitely not enough to keep these guys operating for long. That's just a drop in the bucket compared to what their expenses are. Now, Carnival, for example, has had to already borrow more money and take on more debt just as to try or attempt to even things out for a little bit. And this debt didn't come at a good cost either. It was a very high interest debt that they had to take out. Now, they really don't have any other options at this point. And remember, these cruise lines aren't US companies. So with that said, Unlike the airline industry and the airlines, the government most likely will not bail them out or offer them any financial aid. So they may have to take out high interest debt now just to get through this time. And that's really the only option I can see from here out. And don't get me wrong, it may work, but the downside is these companies will have very little profits moving forward. And so that will mean no return on your investment for a few more years at the very least. Now secondly, if we look further down on the balance sheet, we'll see uh, money that they're getting right now, which is all from customer deposits. And now because they can't operate, I don't know about you guys, but since lately, I've been seeing a lot of promotions for 2021 with cruise ships trying to get people to book early and book their 2021 summer cruises from right now. So by this way, they can get some cash coming in right now and this will also help them get through this period. So looking into the short term future, one could argue that the cruise lines would be backing business and they would be making money again. And I totally agree. They would make money, but based off the numbers here, it's not enough. Again, it's just a drop in the bucket. Now, usually with deposits, the cruise lines get to almost always keep the money because people book cruises that they look forward to and they never really cancel unless they want to change their dates. So usually most of this money is good, but that's only on the normal circumstances. Now we have a lot of uncertainty because people can't travel. And even if they wanted to, they are restricted. Uh, people are also trying to keep as much money in their pockets right now as they possibly can. And so what if this number of deposits keeps going down and down? I mean, as it is, it's already really low. What if people actually start asking for refunds? What will happen then? Now, in this video, I'm just bringing you guys the facts here and you can then make your own decisions, right? I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy on the internet who invests, tries to make money and shares what he knows. Now, look at the assets that these companies have. Here you see assets and the deposits or liabilities because the people who have booked haven't gotten the service yet, so they can't count on that money fully until the service has been provided. Now anyways, besides that, the assets are even less than the deposits in terms of value, which is again shocking if not just totally frightening. I mean, I'm not trying to scare anyone, but to me, this feels a bit uneasy. I mean, right now I'm beginning to feel like this is one of those high risk investments and it was reported that they wouldn't start operating until I believe June again. So they are out for another month once more. Now remember, this is all based off the financial statements from the last quarter, which ended in December 2019, right before the virus started causing trouble for the cruise lines. We are now in April of 2020, so they should be releasing another one for the first quarter of 2020 very soon, probably in a couple of days. Now, surely it has to be worse for the majority of this time period because they haven't been making any money. So back to the main question. Are these companies good low risk companies to investing as of right now? Well, I think the numbers say it guys. They are definitely not low risk companies to investing as of right now. And the longer they're out of business for, the higher the risk becomes. I mean, a month ago, it wasn't so bad if we believe that the virus would last only one to two months. 
But seeing that this could stick around until into the end of summer, what could end up happening is that these companies get themselves into so much high interest debt and even when they begin to operate again, they won't be the same again for years. This then in turn means you'll have to wait for a very long time to get a good return on your investment as opposed to you investing in companies that have healthier balance sheets or financials. Now, listen guys, I am by no means telling you that you should invest in these companies and I am always transparent. I myself invest in Norwegian, but as of right now, I feel it's more of a high risk gamble type of situation where, you know, you're kind of saying, okay, I'll take the risk and gamble and hopefully this will be a massive comeback. But as for just throwing all your money at them now and expecting a return, the numbers speak. It's really, really, really a very high risk investment right now. Now, you may end up making a killing, but from what we're seeing, it could easily go the opposite way. Now, this is my take on the cruise line companies right now. I would really love to hear what you guys think about the entire situation. And if you are an investor in these companies, what do you think and what will you be doing? Will you be looking to invest elsewhere or will you continue investing in these companies? Uh, drop me a comment down below. I'd really love to hear what you guys are thinking as well. Now, remember to never invest anything you can't afford to lose. And guys, like I said before, I'm not saying you should invest in them because I still have shares in Norwegian and I'm not going to sell them, right? For me, I just really want to see what happens and I'm really curious. And even though the numbers are pretty much red flags all around, there's just that small feeling that I still have that this virus will be out soon and they will cruise again before they go bankrupt. And people also aren't going to be afraid to cruise again. Uh, that's what I think. So even if off to a rocky start, I'm really hoping and keeping that positivity in mind that they do make it out and we all make some money if we invest in them. But comment down below and share your thoughts with me on this one. Now, if you guys really like this video, then give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification icon so you can see new videos and I post new videos here throughout the week. If this is the first time you're seeing me, my name is Ian and on this channel, I talk about personal finance, investing and making money. To all my returning viewers and subscribers, thank you for tuning in to the channel once more. Well guys, there you have it on my thoughts on the cruise industry as of right now. Thank you all for watching, all the best in your investments, and until next time, take care.